Now we're on to the Healthy Aging Tour. 2-1 race, but the start list is stacked. We've already mentioned it a couple of times. Drops the Coal is riding here. The Coal title sponsor of the Drops the Coal team. Actually did pretty well today. Um, as Conti team getting right up there. Assen to Assen, 126k stage around some sort of F1 circuit. I don't really know. It was a race car circuit, I think. Um, it's in the Netherlands. It's flat. It's, I don't know, they did like 300 meters elevation, which is a lot for the Netherlands apparently, but uh, <laughs> out of 127 Ks, bunch sprint. The sprints that we got here, Kirsten Vild, Hosking, Amelie Diedrichsen for Trek. We were like, in our preview, we we're like, would Diedrichsen be back to the level she's shown before in sprints? Uh, Lorena Veebs, if I've mentioned on DSM already. Uh, who else, Ben? Norsgaard. Norsgaard. The revelation at the start of the season, Emma Norsgaard, the Danish national champ for Movistar. Jolindor. Jolindor. Sprinter, Belgian sprinter for SD Works. SD Works just keep winning. Um, but yeah, I thought the main favourites were Dor, Vibes, and Kirsten Wild were the like, lock top three favourites, to be honest, for this stage. Uh, and that's just the way, the way sprints have been for the last long time in women's cycling in the last couple of years <laughs> at least particularly like Weber's is the quickest in the world by far um but it was pretty exciting this flat stage Benji and we'll get to the we'll get to the sprint in a second but Daniel Hengeveld young Dutch rider for GT Krush Tanap very strange name for that team 18 years old we we're like oh I, turned, I flicked it almost seven k's to go I was like oh 25 second gap, 30 second gap, you know, she just, they'll reel her in when they want to. It'll be easy. She just stayed out there forever and ever and ever. And do you think that affected the sprint, How, that Hangerveld stayed out there until like the last 150 meters? I think that it did, but I think a lot influenced the sprint today. If we haven't gone over it yet, the last kilometer of this circuit is pretty treacherous and I don't think it should be treacherous. There's a lot of opportunities on this parkour to not make it treacherous. And the problem that I see is that in the last 350 meters, I was going to say kilometers, but that's not the case. In the last 350 meters of each circuit that they do here, you've got where the sprint is going to be sprinted, obviously, towards the finish line. And there's a chicane literally in the last 350 meters that fast goes to the left, then to the right, and then there's another bend to the right around towards the finish line. So you've basically got three corners in the last 350 meters, which in the first few times they passed her, I was like, ah, they could get through there pretty safely. But I wasn't thinking like, if they do this at a sprinting speed, there's no way they get through that unharmed. And the odd part about it is like, behind the line, there's like a straight line of like 400 meters, 300 meters that they could have extended it and made the finish line later. And I think that would have influenced a lot of here because let me go into the last section. I think that it all really came down together in the last kilometer, really, to be honest. She had a tiny gap on the group then, on the Peloton group that was uh, being led by first DSM as well, leading the group, but also the team of Yolindore also doing quite a bit of work. And it got really treacherous into those last 400 meters because she had a gap of like 20 meters going into that chicane on the group, which was already the sprinters coming to the fore. And the problem there is when they go into that corner, then they obviously are going to try and take the inner corner of the other part of the chicane. And as a consequence, a lot of people that go through the first part of that chicane take it really wide, and one rider, I don't know how she stayed up her bike, she almost rode straight into the barrier on the left side of the road, and she tried to get back into the group, and that caused some chaos in the group, and there was a bit of a split between like the first, I think, eight riders and the rest of the group, and in those first eight riders, it was Alice Barnes taking on the sprint first, but in, was in second wheel, I think Yolindora was fourth or fifth wheel back at that point, and the annoying part about the last 200 meters is that bend that I spoke about, the bend going into the finishing line. And Alice Barnes is taking the inner corner, but coming out of the corner, she doesn't really turn parallel to the road. She kind of keeps going forward and slowly 
turns to the finish line, which means that she ends up basically halfway the road instead of at the barrier on the on the left side of the road. So yeah, she goes the straightest. She goes the shortest line, as if you're yeah. doing a TT on the on the Imola circuit. If you remember all the guys doing and women doing the TT on the Imola circuit, they like go apex apex on these F1 circuits in the finish, rather than following the bend across to her right. And yeah, that caused problems, Benji. Yes, because Lorena Wibbs was in her wheel, and Lorena Wibbs was, well, she thought that Alice Barnes was going to turn towards the finishing line, so Wibbs did so as well, a bit too close to the wheel of Alice Barnes, surely, because she ended up crossing with her front wheel to the back wheel of Alice Barnes, trying to move a bit to the right to go to the finish line and actually follow par- parallel to the road, and it caused Wibbs to crash pretty heavily. She uh, rolled over a few a times. Acceleration. She's like just started to like to sprint. Yeah. And as a consequence, she touched Alice Barnes' wheel. Alice Barnes was like, oh, what's happening here? She tried to get back into sprint mode in the last few meters, but behind those two riders, there was another person that was coming up, Yolene Dora, that had to evade Weebus, so also had to break a tiny bit. I don't think no she lost crashed. as much momentum. No, no, no one else crashed. Yeah, I don't get how no one crashed, but that's good, I guess. And... She lost a lot of momentum, daughter, but I think she didn't lose as much momentum as Barnes did by having Wibbers in her wheel for a second there. And yeah, she just sprinted. She was much faster to get back to top speed than Alice Barnes was. And on the line, she just passed Alice Barnes and took the victory here. So very treacherous parkour in the last 200 meters. I think the parkour really influenced the outcome of the stage. I cannot tell you who would have won if... I'll tell you. Yeah, Wibbers. If there was no crash, Webers would have won. <laughs> yeah, I think Webers she's going to be doubly annoyed. I, th- I hope she's all right. She got straight back on her bike, yeah. so I hope she's okay. It looked like she was okay. She hit the ground pretty hard, but she's like ninety nine percent to blame for the crash, in my view. It's pretty, pretty bad er- error and handling error from her getting her wheel on the wrong side and then nah. sprinting. Much- nah, she sprinted pretty much straight into Alice Barnes. Like Alice Barnes didn't really move off their line or anything that badly. It looked to me like it looked to me like Vibas wanted to pass her as close as possible on a bend and pretty much had her head down and barreled straight into her back wheel. I'm so gonna I'm, bring forward a point here. I f- this yeah. is gonna be like this is next level. I'm not blaming anybody. This is how I apply the current UCI rules. Which is really annoying. We know that in the organizers specifications it says that the final 200 meters at least should be straight. The word should, and it's also in the specification. So those are guidelines and not necessarily rules. So that's a mistake by the UCI, in my opinion. The last portion of a sprint should always be straight. It causes this issue. And it also causes another issue. We spoke about Alice Barnes taking a route to the finish line that is not parallel to the road. That means that she's not holding the same lane on paper because the lane on paper follows the road which means that on paper she broke the deviation rule which is stupid no. on paper think... she did but it's stupid <laughs> and as a consequence i don't know about the that. person who didn't change lane and kept the same turn yeah crashed i don't think that alan's barnes is to blame i think that this is an issue with the deviation rule again and the issue comes straight from the fact that they don't have a rule that there shouldn't be a bend in the last 200 meters, and I hate it. Because every single time something happens like this... I agree, but... We're going to talk about it. Lorena Veebs has got either side of the road to choose from. Barnes is in the middle of the road. There's no one around She them. wasn't going into the corner. And she sprints pretty much straight into, into House Barnes, so... I think she would have won the stage. She was coming really, really yeah. fast. She she definitely would have beat Barnes. Whether Jolie and Dora would have been able to get onto her wheel and win as well, I don't think so based on the how I've, those two have fared in the past. But maybe I need to go back and look at it more closely, I guess. It's a little bit... Um, yeah, Benji's looked at it a bit closer to me. He's put it on Twitter. Benji's put it on a thread on Twitter with some screenshots, etc. So maybe that's the... Go and have a discussion there as well. Uh, but Yumbo Visma Benji, Carolyn Schwinkel's third, Anna Henderson fourth, both on Yumbo Visma win, women. I thought they'd be sprinting for Henderson. Charlotte Cool fifth, Amy Peters sixth for SD Works. Georgia Danford seventh for Andy Schleck's team. 
Engerveld hung on to eighth for GT Krush Tanap. Marjoline uh, van der Galoof for drops. Lecole yep. came ninth, and Amber van der Hulst came tenth for Parker Tel Valkenberg. Parker Tel Valkenberg were doing a fair bit of work bringing things back. Norsgaard 11th, Hosking 15th, and Brenauer 16th, Benji, the best placed. Uh, so that's the best place. Movistar, Trek, and Theratizit WNT Pro Cycling Riders. That I is think, that's disappointing for them. I think it's all because of the chicane. Because they went into the chicane with Norsgaard sitting two wheels behind the group that eventually got loose in that chicane. And if that chicane wasn't there, then Norsgaard with her Movistar ride that was next to her would have been able to creep back up and would have been able to sprint for it in the end. But here she got basically cancelled out because I think that one rider who went to the barrier, when she went back in, she kind of ruined up the peloton a tiny bit. Not on purpose, obviously. She just tried to stay up, which is a miracle, to be honest. And I think that ruined the options of anybody in that second group to do anything, going from Norsgaard to Marjolaine van Gelof, who was also, I think, sixth in Le Samad behind. Uh, Norsgaard, who got second there. So, yeah, I think a lot of decent sprinters didn't get their opportunity today. And um, I think that we might see some different top fives in the coming results if it comes down to a proper sprint in the end. And um, I think all in all, it was a, a really fun race. It's very fun to see young riders come to the fore in those breakaways throughout the stage, creeping up and, and displaying their colors. And, and just the fact that we don't see coverage of this almost ever a continental race in, in women's cycling. And I love that it's there because now we can do what we do with men's racing and we can analyze, ooh, who's going to be a talent in the future? Oh, this is going to be fun. This is a young Dutch rider who can do well in the future. That kind of stuff. And that's what I'm so intrigued about in cycling, looking at the lower grades of cycling as well and see who's going to pop up, who's going to move up, who's a young talent and who's going to step into world tour in the coming years. And something like this gives an opportunity to that. And we don't have that often, so I'm celebrating it. All right, tomorrow, time trial from Laversug to Laversug. These names. 14 kilometers, <laughs> pancake flat in North and Netherlands. Um, there's three names, I think. Van Dijk. Who else? Oh, Brenau, sorry. I had, I just, my brain just shut down. Brenau from <laughs> Serbia, <laughs> And Emma Norsgaard, Benji, she came second at Corona Donation uh, in 2018 when she was like a mere child, 18 years old or 19. <laughs> a mere child. <laughs> <laughs> she came second in Le in second in Omloop. She should have won one of them uh, if, she had, if she had a better lead out. She was the strongest rider in definitely Le Samin. She was the strongest rider. I think Norsgaard might win. Based on how, yeah, I think Norsgaard's a good shout tomorrow. Uh, but who do you pick? Is there another name I'm missing? Hmm. What's the time trial of Alice Barnes like? Because I generally don't know her time trialing capabilities. I haven't seen any of her the last year. Eighth in Stellatizzi Challenge good. last year. So it's pretty good. She's up there. Oh, yeah, Kirchman from Sunweb. DSM also pretty good at this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with an outsider. I'm going to go for Lea Kirchman. Okay. I reckon Norsgaard might have cost herself the GC by being not getting the, some of the bonus seconds today. But, yeah, they've got uh, the ITT tomorrow, which I think she'll do well at if, if pure power and positioning is not as important, obviously. But that's the uh, Healthy Aging Tour Stage 1 wrap-up. We'll be back tomorrow with wrap-ups at Parony Stage 5, Torino Stage 2 and Healthy Aging Tour Stage 2. Hope you enjoyed this beast of a podcast. Go and check out our show partner, Lacole, www.lacole.cc, in the link in, just in the description if you need to get yourself any new cycling kit. And we'll be back tomorrow. I've got to go to sleep. Benji's got to edit all these. Ciao. <laughs>